1946. Lil Maya goes out to pick her mother a bouquet of wildflowers. Suddenly, a light comes on over the girl and she disappears. The same thing happens to soldier Richard in 1951, old millionaire Orson in 1979, boys Kyle and Sean in 2001 and more than 4,000 other people. Present day. While sitting in the hospital next to Kyle's bedside, Tom listens to a report about a comet that will pass close to Earth. Tom's wife, Linda, enters the room. The three years while the guy has been in a coma have not been easy for the woman and she wants a fresh start in life. The Department of Homeland Security in Seattle. Diana is urgently called to work, where she's informed that the comet has changed course and increased its speed, descending directly upon the Earth. Several countries launch missiles, hoping to shoot down the strange object, but people prepare for the disaster, calling their loved ones to say goodbye. The comet begins to slow down as it enters the atmosphere. Diana calculates the point at which the object is about to land. It turns out to be very close to the department. Hundreds of people arrive, emergency services, journalists, police and FBI agents. In front of them, the sphere falls from the sky. The sphere abruptly disappears, leaving behind thick mist from which 4,400 people emerge, looking around in astonishment. Among them are Richard the Soldier, the Old Millionaire, Little Maya and all the others. They all look the same as the day they disappeared, even though it was different years of the 20th century. Tom leaves his son and goes to Ryland to get permission to return to duty, but Dennis is in no hurry to agree, realizing that Tom has a personal interest. His nephew is among those who have returned. Ryland finally agrees, and despite Diana's displeasure, he pairs Tom with her, assigning them to examine the returning 4400 people. Over the speakerphone, Sean is asked to come in for an interview. Seeing his uncle makes the guy happy that he can talk to his own family man. But it turns out that all three years Tom has been convinced that his nephew has hurt Kuliu, which put him in a coma, and escaped. While sitting in the waiting room, Richard meets Lily, who turns out to be the granddaughter of the girl the soldier was in love with in 1951. A month and a half passes and the district court upholds the request to release the detainees. Diane disagrees and demands that the crowd be isolated from the surrounding area, but the 4400 people go free. Of them, 130 do not understand where they are going. Among them is little Maya, who has no relatives left. Richard and Lily say goodbye, and the woman is about to return to the family she has not seen in 11 years. But Lily does not see her husband among those meeting her. The girl makes it home, but her husband Brian asks her to leave and announces that he is married and she has no place in their lives anymore. Orson finds his wife in a nursing home, and he too finds it hard to hold back tears, thinking of all the time he has lost. Richard arrives in St. Louis to his old address, but now he finds a den of homeless people there. Tom brings Diana to a party, organized in Sean's honor, so his partner can be convinced that those who returned are no different from the rest of the people. After leaving his colleague for a while, Tom goes outside to see Sean, to apologize and say he's glad he's back. During the conversation, a bird falls near the men, shattering on the glass, but as soon as Sean picks it up, the bird comes to life and flies away. Maya is taken into custody by her family, and as she says goodbye to Diana, the girl says they will see each other very soon, much to the agent's surprise. Orson returns to the company he once created himself, but his companion refuses to give him a job. The foster parents assign Maya a room, and the girl puts her shoes on a chair, claiming that her sneakers might get wet on the floor. This surprises the couple, and they have no idea what they are talking about. The first night out is hard for everyone. Richard spends his time at a cafe. Sean receives threats written on his car. Lily wanders the streets, not knowing where to go, and at Maya's foster parents' house, a pipe from the washing machine bursts and floods everything. Orson goes to his former companion's house. The cowardly businessman decides not to open the door, but when the old man shakes the bars off the gate, the whole house begins to shake and the windows fly out. Moments later, Orson begins to scream and it causes Adam's head to burst and the traitor to fall to the floor. Sean comes to school after a long absence, but the boy has a hard time. His peers do not want to accept the returned. Orson also feels rejected. He's not charged, but they won't let him go either. When Diana begins to read the man's statement, he goes berserk again and everything around him begins to shake. Maya arrives with her guardians at the cemetery to visit her parents. The girl is happy that they rest in a beautiful place, but she also promises her foster parents that their cemetery will be no worse. 
A new shock awaits Lily. She goes to the doctor with a bout of nausea and learns that she's about to have a baby. After finishing his business, Orson hurries to the nursing home, but finds his wife's bed empty. After learning that his wife has passed away, the old man stages a mayhem. Lily meets her husband and tells him about the pregnancy, but naturally, the man does not admit his involvement. In addition, he refuses to let his wife see his daughter, warning her that he will sue if there are violations. One of the guys won't stop picking on Sean, and the guy pins the abuser to the ground and holds his hand and pulls the life out of him. The guy manages to be saved, but by doing so, Sean scares the crowd even more. Maya's foster parents are frightened. The man says he no longer wants to see the strange girl in the house, and without even hearing the conversation, she packs her things. The couple bring Maya back to the quarantine facility, and the frustrated mother advises her to be careful about her predictions. Richard finds Lily in the park. The couple go to a cafe, and Lily tells her friend about the baby she's about to have. Richard, in turn, tells the girl about the affair he had with her grandmother. Tom and Diana arrive at the house where the returned is hiding. Orson does not believe the agents and asks to be left alone, starting to wreck everything again. To calm the old man's attack, Tom has to fire a shot. The returned man is taken to the hospital, and Ryland instructs his subordinates to find out what other talents the travelers have in order to prevent more tragedies. Upon learning what happened, Sean recalls the bird that came to life and the classmate who almost stopped breathing. To test his hunches, the guy goes to his cousin's room and brings him out of his coma for a minute. Carl, one of the returned, returns to his job at the fishmonger's shop. Walking with his wife Grace after work, the guy reminisces about his past life. Not far from the couple, youngsters are playing baseball, and Carl himself does not understand how the ball ends up in his hand. Grace warns her husband that the local park has become dangerous, but against her warnings, the guy decides to walk through it late at night. And Carl is attacked by bullies. He doesn't mind giving them everything he has, but instead he decides to use his new powers to teach the bullies a lesson. Tom and Diana visit Maya. After she returns, many employees complain about the girl's predictions, and Ryland asks his colleagues to deal with it. Richard rents an apartment for Lily and her baby, and the girl asks her buddy to stay with them. Suddenly, Lily becomes ill and rushes out into the street. Carl tells his wife about what happened, and happily informs her that he will revive the park and make it safe again. The doctor calls Tom and Linda and informs them of their son's brief brain surge and new chances. Tom learns that the night the sensors showed the spike, Kyle was visiting Sean. The agent goes to see his nephew, but he won't admit to waking up his cousin. The agents pay a visit to the department that is parsing hypotheses, but so far the only hypothesis is aliens. At Lily's request, the couple rents another apartment, and the girl is so happy that she doesn't hold back and kisses a friend. Kyle can't wait until morning, and already at night he goes to the park to start the work of cleaning up. The guy manages not only to paint a bench, but also to save a girl from bullies. Diana visits Maya in the lab, and the girl asks the agent to take her in, but Diana asks for time to think. The girl rescued in the park gives a statement to Tom and Diana. She describes the superhero and recalls that he smelled like fish. In the meantime, Lily does not give up hope of getting her daughter back, and in the evening she watches her through the window. Suddenly, the woman becomes ill and it gives her away, causing her to end up behind bars. Richard comes to Lily's ex-husband and asks him to withdraw his complaint, promising that the girl will never bother him again. Already in the evening, Lily is released and Richard arranges a romantic dinner for her. The man is willing to do anything for her and a romance ensues between the two. Nikki visits Sean's garage and accidentally burns her hand, but the guy removes the burn with one touch. The couple's meeting also ends with a kiss, even though Danny asked his brother to stay out of it. Carl continues his nightly raids of the park, but by this time Tom and Diana figure him out and show up at his wife Grace's house. The woman leads the agents to where her husband is, and the company finds the guy seriously injured. Tom calls an ambulance, but it is too late. In memory of the returned, locals come to the park to clean up and finish what he started. Diana goes straight to the lab at night and picks up Maya. Tom also goes to the hospital. Kyle is transferred to the ICU because he has started having serious brain problems. It turns out that Oliver Knox, a serial maniac, was among the returned, and there have been new victims in town recently. The agents visit Knox, but of course the guy denies his involvement in the crimes. 
Sean can't stop thinking about his powers, and at night he goes to the place where the glowing ball recently took him. But Sean is not alone in visiting the foot of the mountain. Several dozen returns gathered there, experiencing adaptation in a new world. Here comes millionaire Jordan Collar, who is also among the missing. He tells the gathering that the whole world is against them, and he is ready to lend them a helping hand. Jordan invites everyone to his mansion to discuss how they will live their lives. Diana examines the place where the recent victim was found, and the agent manages to find a fresh fingerprint of the perpetrator. The maniac's name is established almost immediately, but he cannot be caught. The sheriff admits that he owes Knox an apology for the false accusation. The nanny Diana hired for Maya runs away and asks not to call her again. The girl's predictions continue to scare people. In downtown, a strange guy tries to get out under a truck, but nothing comes out, and then he loudly declares that he's the one responsible for the mass crimes. The agents arrive at the station, and Tom says that something strange is going on. Neither this guy nor the one who ended his life could have been maniacs from the past. In the Fed's opinion, Knox is the one responsible for the horrors, and it remains to be seen how he does it. The returned gather at the rich man's house. After learning about Lily's pregnancy, the millionaire gives her and Richard special attention, and he even offers the boy a job after learning that he is not hired anywhere. The police receive another letter, allegedly from the serial criminal. Tom realizes that all the threats lead to Knox, but he can't get him without proof. Sean arrives at the place from which he was abducted, and the guy recalls that something wanted to drag Kyle away that night. In the park, another maniac is hunting the returned, but the agents manage to intercept him. The feds go after Knox, but the criminal is not at home. Instead, they find an altar dedicated to the victims and an inscription with the name of the girl they managed to save. At the exact same time, Knox ends up at Felicia's apartment, but the cops arrive before the psychopath can carry out his plan. Knox is put in a glass cell, but even there he tries to do evil, only the soundproof glass prevents him from doing it. Tom arrives at his son's house and sees Sean bringing Kyle to his senses. Sitting on the bed, the boy recognizes his father. Kyle is discharged home, but the boy does not recognize his room or his belongings, causing his parents to worry. Tom visits his nephew to thank him for bringing his son back, and the boy asks that he not tell anyone about what happened. Lily and Richard return home after a walk, and at the door the girl gets sick. This saves the family from misfortune, someone has booby-trapped their apartment door. Tom and Diana inspect the scene, and the woman tries to get information from her partner about Sean's connection to Kyle's awakening, but the agent remembers his nephew's request and says nothing. The returned millionaire gives Richard and Lily a house in a cottage community he built specifically for all the 4400 people. Tom catches Kyle in the act of tearing up pictures of the boy. He pushes his father away and confesses that everyone seems like a stranger to him. The millionaire's settlement settles in, but the agents try to convince Jordan that it is too dangerous to gather everyone in one place. Nevertheless, the millionaire is not going to back down, and Richard, becoming the head of the security, is going to help him. Diana comes to pick up Maya from school, and the principal asks her not to bring the girl anymore. Everyone fears getting hit if a hunt for her begins. Noticing her guardian's concern, Maya reassures her, promising that someone will make things right soon. Another return dies, this time it's Flower Girl Mary. The number of the 4400 victims frightens the agents, and the situation grows more serious. Nikki breaks up with Danny, and Sean decides to take advantage of the situation and asks the girl out. A man from Washington arrives at the department, and upon learning of the agent's connection to the members of the 4400, he hints at their removal from the case. Linda asks Tom to go into Kyle's room, and the man catches his son doing a strange thing. The boy is making marks on a map, and he explains that he is looking for himself. Sean leads Nikki to the shore of the lake, over which he was dropped off by the balloon in the company of the other returned, and the couple have a great time doing nice things there. The agents find the laboratory where substances were created to destroy the returned, but the perpetrators have managed to escape. The feds manage to find out that the criminals are the siblings of one of the maniac Knox's victims, and now they are on their way to Sean's house. The trail turns out to be false, and the criminals escape, reaching the village of the millionaire. The security and Tom try to stop the van filled with explosives, and they manage to do so a second before disaster strikes. 
Kyle continues to lose his mind and eventually declares that he's an outsider and not at all who they think he is. The family brings the boy back to hospital, hoping that he will get help. All the while, the young man is flipping through channels without explaining exactly what he's looking for. Tom briefly leaves the hospital and during that time, agents from Washington arrive and the boy is taken away, despite Linda's pleas. Upon learning this, Tom complains to his colleague and demands that his son be given back to him. But the sent agent won't tell him where they have placed Kyle. Lily learns at the appointment that her baby has some sort of genetic abnormality and the doctor orders a series of more tests. Richard accidentally overhears Jordan's secretary talking and learns that he regularly calls Lily's doctor. He tricks the security guard into getting him a printout of the boss's phone calls to check something out. His suspicions are confirmed and Richard visits the doctor to find out why, after each visit to Lily, she reports everything to Jordan. It turns out that Richard is most likely the father of Lily's child. Diana manages to find out where Kyle is being held and she and Tom plan to free the boy and hide him in the rented house along with Linda. In the evening, the colleagues gather for the mission and Maya, wishing the Guardian an easy job, says that they will find Kyle and in him the answers to everything. The colleagues infiltrate the lab and free Kyle, who gives them the address to which they must take him urgently. Tom tries to take his son to the asylum, but he keeps insisting on the beach from which Sean was once kidnapped, so the agent has to comply. The millionaire summons Lily and shows her notes from old newspapers saying that Richard has been accused of assaulting young women. After talking to her husband, Lily understands why Jordan showed her this, and she asks Richard to leave the settlement as soon as possible. Danny learns of his brother's affair with Nikki, and when he arrives home, he tries to deal with Sean in front of his mother. Not wanting to hurt his brother, Sean just puts his hand on him and Danny almost passes out, causing even his mother to look at the returned man as a monster. Jordan tries to stop the fugitives and grabs Lily, but as soon as his hand is on the woman's stomach, he immediately gets sick. But looking after the car, he still says that he will take the baby. To the millionaire's luck, Sean arrives in the village, telling him of his abilities and his problems and asking to be allowed to stay. Tom brings his son to the beach and the feds arrive there as well. In front of his father, Kyle unleashes a beam of bright light that shoots straight into the sky. The men seem to be paralyzed by the bright light on the outside, but they feel fine on the inside. Standing by the water, Tom hears an alien voice from Kyle's body. The agent is sure that all this is the work of aliens, but the voice gives out an unexpected clue. In fact, they are ordinary people who came from the future. In that time, humanity is dying out and it needed people to survive. Now they are all back and their task is to change and save the world with their abilities. The voice doesn't have time to finish. One of the agents shoots and hits Kyle. The beam breaks off and the men fall to the ground. Kyle takes his last breaths and Tom starts to say goodbye. But the light leaves the guy's body and a minute later he comes to, already being the real Kyle. Six months later. Lily and Richard live in a small house at the bottom of the mountains and one normal day the baby is about to be born. While driving the car to the birthplace, the couple doesn't notice the trees bowing to them along the road. That's where the first season ends. Guys, write in the comments what you think about this series.